Pistons in the Chicago sky. Knockouts already tonight. I'm looking for some more knockouts. Uh, man, there's somebody listen, man. This ready to go down right now. Mm -hmm. Come on, there you go, there you go. Here it come. Here it come. Oh, whoa, oh. Looks like it might be another knockout. Mm. Williams is like he's trying to uh, hurt something. Waiting for the right moment. Mm. Yeah, but I tell you, he waiting for the right moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Closing the ring off. Closing. There we go. There we go. Ooh. 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 Oh my God! He's trying to get him out of there. He got him out. Body shots. Yeah. I don't think he's coming back in. Quincy Lewis. That's his name. Quincy Williams. Quincy Williams. Quincy Williams. Little funny as shit. Quincy Those Williams. Funny, man. <laughs> and I'm fried. Man. I just remember drink by Eric Outlaw Hunter. Yeah, you know, legend. Quincy Williams out of DC. You're always a pleasure, babe. Glad to see you, man. Glad to see you. I'm good, bro. For your winner, by KO Quincy. You got a big win tonight in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I see your coaches and your trainer is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. What did he tell you to go in there and do? Well, he told me to fill him out at first, but he, he told me I was going to get him out there in the first round, so that's what I did. You know, I came out here, and he told me to go to the body, too, as well. As soon as I went to the body, it was right. You ready to get back in there and do it again? Yeah, yes, sir. Shout out to you, man. Y'all make some noise for Quincy Williams out of D.C. Yes, sir. He, like, he did body and fender work. <laughs> he did body and fender work. No, it's not. 
Oh, there it is, there it is, body. So, listen, the garage is open. Body shot. Talking to the, the Dominican kid. He, he talks. Yeah, to yep. And, and, and it give you more experience. The knockout. Sometimes the knockout, man. You know, you lose it. You lose out on a bunch of good experience. And when you get in there with a real experienced fighter, you don't know how. You don't know what to do. You just retreat. You on your bike. Now you become a, you know, a, a hundred. Ooh. Man. Smith with that setup, that pawn jab, tap, tap. Ooh. Big overhand right, right hook. Mm. Yeah, like Wilder was saying, get that experience. That experience because if you, you're jumping in with a monster, now yeah. you ain't got no experience, you don't know what to do. Now you're on your bike, now you're in the Olympics. And, and now you're Jesse Owens. Yes, sir. And that's embarrassing because you don't got experience, you don't know what to do when the pressure comes because you never had no in the ring pressure. It's different in, right. it's different in training camp. Because the pressure, the pressure is, is measured in design. Because we, we live in a game where everybody try to say you ain't fighting nobody. My whole thing is anytime you step in the ring, you're fighting a professional athlete and then you go any either way. I, I don't know where that term comes, you ain't fighting nobody. All right, shit, man. Anybody get, man, we didn't seen it happen. People be wild. Yep. No power, no. quick punches. You don't know what's going on in their life and their mind. Look at Quick punches, no power. There you go. Speed suit. Right, Four like punch this. Combo this dude, suit. you can tell he fight everywhere. Bars. Put him together. He, Quick. He's going to fight any. This dude right here, Morales. He done fought in some wild places, man. So to get in there and fight with him and make it out, and be doing good. <laughs> yup, he be calm. Any patient. He ain't, he ain't. Nope. Here you go. You know, but um, great work, bro. Great, great work, bro. Not really. I'm here with Lamar Smith Jr. If you're from Philly, they call him Super. 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 Man, you got one fight. Yeah, one fight and you just fought a 20 fight veteran. Yep. He was strong. You hit him with a good shot. He was talking to you in there. What did he tell you? He told me he told me good work. That's what he told me. He told you good work? Yep. You ready to get back in there? Yeah, I'm ready to get back in there, baby. When you realized that, okay, he wasn't going tonight, you wasn't gonna stop him. Did that make you adjust your game plan? Yeah, it made me adjust my game plan. It told me I had to fight smart, box on the outside, use my turning. Congratulations to Super! Make some noise for Lamar Smith Jr. It's frustrating because you don't know how they come. They're all over the place. I don't know how much that is. And it can frustrate you because now you got to bandage your plan and restructure your plan. And then you got to, you know, you got to be patient and study the fighter. Yeah, you don't know where he's coming. Oh. He locking him up, he locking him up, he grabbing him, he locking him up. Yeah, did he? He locking him up, like, oh. Ooh. One of them connect, bro. There you go, there you go, there you go. He grabbed, there you go. There you go, there you go. 
There you go. He had it. He was out of there. Don't let him, don't let him hold you. Don't let him hold you. He's trying to grab him. He can't. He, he's, he's gone. Look, 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 he grabbed the ropes. He grabbed the ropes. He grabbed the ropes. He, he, he needed that. He needed that. Oh! Yeah, he got it. He got, he got to get him all off him now. Look, because he's still punching back. Look, look, Clemens still, Clemens still got some in him. Tough opponent tonight? Nah, I think he's a regular opponent. He came to fight though. He definitely nah. came to fight. He was holding you a lot and he hit you with some, a bunch of baby punches at the end like this. Did the baby punches have any effect on you? Absolutely not. Give it up for the chosen one, y'all. <laughs> he's working him out. He's working him out. No, no, no. The demon dog is not here today. Look at this. Cool. Yo, what is going on, man? Look, look, look at him. He's like, look at him. He's fighting for his life. He's getting up out of here. He ain't no joke. Jabril ain't no joke. Hey, Jabril ain't no joke. Look at his homies. His, his homies just tell him, Kelly, throw the towel in. As a coach, would you throw the towel because you're right? What's next for you? Whatever we bring got for us, we'll be rumbling whenever, whenever. Get back in the truck. Your trainer bring happy? Yeah. I'll beat him up when we was younger, but that's something different. <laughs> Make some noise with your grill, y'all. You know. I'll beat you up. No, you did good.
I'm sitting here with the twin, Daniel Brandy. First of all, let's do this right. Y'all make some noise, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, for the 16-year-old female. Now, we've been watching you and your brother since y'all was kids, coming up on social media since you was babies. Now you're 16 years old, growing into a young man. How does it feel to be a professional fighter, doing something and living out your dreams that you've been trying to live since you was a child? I mean, it feels good. I'm, I'm definitely glad to be here. Thank you to all my fans and my family. And I want to say, uh, unfortunately, one of my biggest fans ain't here with us no more. I want to say rest in peace to Block. He was one of my biggest fans, and you know, unfortunately to be here. It's unfortunate. What's next for you? More fights. Whatever we got. Whatever we got next. Let me bring your father in here. I want to shout this man out because this is a perfect example of when you and your kids' life, what they can do. When you're a part of your kids' life and you're giving them direction, they can become some great individuals. So I just want to shout this man out for being a great dad. Shout out to his mother too. Y'all make some noise for the Grand Twins. Keep going up now. <laughs> oh, I caught you. I caught him. I caught him. You see, I caught him. I caught you though, Nep. Nep, I slammed your lip, Nep. Nep, I really wanted to extend that drink. Shh, that shit. She's going down. He's going down. Let's go, Chad. Let's go, Chad. He's right. 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 That's a good old Badlands <laughs> up and run right thing. Say it again. <laughs> Johnny from the Badlands. <laughs> he from Badlands. <laughs> hey, yo. Damn, Johnny. Yeah. You're good at what you do, bro. Thank you, man. I'm trying to learn from the best. To the winner, by unanimous decision, Johnny! Because this whole crowd over here was screaming, get him, Johnny! Get him, Johnny! So I just want to tell you to keep going up, keep doing your thing. Congratulations. Y'all make some noise for Lou Johnny! How it feel? It feels 
feel good, baby. You know, we show them do what we want to do. My first time in Philly. I hope I won over some fans. I'll be back. You know, appreciate y'all. What's next on the agenda for you? Uh, man, we're right back to the gym, man. Uh, trying to go again, November, something like that, man. You know, we uh, we number nine right now on Box Rex. So anybody above us, man, we ain't ducking no smoke. We getting ready, man. We on our way. Everybody above us. Yo, make some noise for this young warrior right here. Yes, sir. The official sports drink for the Philadelphia 76ers in the Chicago sky. Give you some, yeah, you need some, nigga. You, you need some energy. Neff, you smell like that Reggie, Neff. Neff smell like that Reggie, cuz. Neff got some good smoke, some good Reggie. Smoking that Reggiano. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 Yeah, that's Something, it's always something. They're so close. What are, what is something that can help you 
for be reminded of the goals that you are that you're trying to accomplish. What is what are things that you can do to keep yourself motivated? Like I said, Taylor, the young brother, what do you want for yourself? You know, you gotta, you gotta have a conversation. You gotta have, you gotta look in the mirror and have a real conversation with yourself and say, I'm almost there. This is what I want. I'm ready to, I'm ready to touch this. I'm ready to feel this. I'm ready to go out into the world. Why do I let go now? What did I go through all these years for what? To let go now? To give up now? How you gonna quit on yourself? But you want the world to come through and show up for you. You want everybody else in the world to show up for you, but you ain't gonna show up for yourself. No, that ain't how it work, little sister. You gotta keep going. You got to keep going because you're this close. Get there. Get there and go live the dreams. Go out and go live the life that you want for yourself. Because it, it's your life. It ain't nobody else's. And everybody out here worrying about their life, they trying to position themselves. So why would you give up now? And the worst thing you can do, honestly, in life is get to the finish line and trip. Feel what I'm saying? You ran the whole race. You got to the finish line and trip. And then three people pass you, you ain't get a gold or silver or bronze. So you right there at the finish line, you might as well cross the finish line. That'd be, a lot of, that'd be a problem with a lot of people is that we come up with ideas, we come up with these things that we gonna do, and then when it's time to operate on it, we talk ourselves out of operating on it. I don't know if I can do it. Ah, it's gonna take too much money, instead of just doing it. The reality of it is some of y'all in here is what, 18, 19 years old, 20 years old? He did 20 years in jail. He went to jail when he was 17 years old. He came home when he was 37. He got a Lamborghini, a Porsche, a Maybach, a 63 Benz truck, and a Denali pickup truck. He's the cultural advisor at YouTube. After doing 20 years in prison for armed robbery, at the age of 17, that's 7,300 days in prison. And he came home with no excuses, none. Didn't hold, didn't blame it on nobody. He held himself accountable for all his actions and he held himself accountable for how he gonna carry himself since the day he walked out of prison. So if he can do it with no degree, being away from civilization for 20 years, come on man, y'all can do anything y'all wanna do in life out here. Think about that. What's some advice that you can give them as they're coming into college and they've been doing their business from home, but now that they're on a huge campus with different types of people, with different types of networks, what can they do to branch their business to be bigger than what it is? Hold up, you got people, like I keep talking about, that 6,000. You got a built in, you know, customers and fan base right here. Worry about them. Because they gonna be your marketers. They gonna, I'm, everybody live in, how many people from Baltimore here? Make some noise. How many people from Philly? How many people from DC? How many people from Virginia? New York? Jersey? Delaware? You see what I'm saying? You got people from all over. So they're gonna go back, they're gonna wear your stuff, they're gonna talk about your product. Why not sell to them? Focus on them. It gotta be hot. See, it start off with the product. The product gotta be hot to make them say, well, I like that hoodie, I like that t-shirt, I like, then when they got it on, to make somebody else say, yo, what kind of hoodie is that? So it all start with your product. Then it start with how much work you gonna put in to make sure your product is seen, to make sure, are you gonna be, oh, such and such performing on campus, you gonna be on some cool shit, you are gonna be like, no, I need to get little baby this hoodie, man. And now when you like that, your people going to back you. So now when you give a little baby the hoodie, your man behind you, yeah, he got the hottest shit on campus. Everybody wearing that shit. So, but that's because you putting the work in. When you put the work in, see black people, let me just tell you this, when you at the bottom, black people will root you to the top. It's when you get to the top that you got to worry. Cause then they'll root your ass right back down to the bottom. But when you coming from the bottom, oh, they want to see you go up. You ain't even got to worry until you get here. Then when you get there, then you worry. Um, what's your advice on like owning a successful business in like 18 years, 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, 20 years? Um, for us, 
it's all about work. Like right now, you know, of course, you know, we got Million Dollars Worth of Game. We own that. Uh, we got the fastest growing energy drink in the world, Pure Fuel, which is the official sports drink for the Philadelphia 76ers in the Chicago sky. Uh, we got a record label. We got an artist named New York LA, who she's somewhere around like 7 million monthly listeners on all the platforms together. Um, he has airplanes and hotels, clothing line, that's, you, you all see what he's doing online, going ridiculous. He's also, like I said, the cultural advisor at YouTube. I got some other things going into dispensaries and things like that, so for us it's all about ownership. You know, you gotta understand, we control cool, but like my cousin say, a lot of times we don't own it. So we're very big on, on owning are cool, feel me? I think when you say, you know, starting a business, first you gotta figure out what you wanna do now. It's like you go right on the phone, you got a debit card, you can set up anything right now. You go and go, the, the, the way I usually take businesses when we starting a new business, I sit there, piece of paper, pad, I go and go daddy first. I go on GoDaddy and if I'm thinking of a name of a company, I see if the domain name is taken. Once the domain, but I always try to, you know, with social media, everybody got a name, so you might, the name you might want, somebody might have, so I try to spell things differently. I go on GoDaddy, okay, man, nobody got a name, I buy it for a couple cents. You can buy your domain name for a couple cents. And then I go and take all the social media handles, I go register all the social media handles. GoDaddy will also give you a company email. Say, what's your name, young man? Huh? Say if it was Logan, Logan Incorporation, whatever, or Logan Inc. It'll be Logan at LoganInc.com, your email. And then you go set up all the social medias and whatever the name of that company is, whatever you want it to be. And then you just, you just source it. You're starting a clothing line, you're starting a label, you're starting a podcast. You just start sourcing the information, um, getting the equipment. If you're starting a podcast, you, 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 can, you can shoot a podcast off your phone. That's all you need is your phone in a trap. Right there, that's all you need to shoot a podcast. I had a show a couple years back on YouTube called Where's Wallow? And that's all I had right there that you see right there. I had that. And I was doing big time interviews, interviewing everybody from Lil Baby, Dirk, uh, Charlemagne, West Side Gun, Jada. I interviewed a bunch of people. G Herbo, all off of just pulling up the phone, boom, YouTube jumping. Hundred thousands of uh, subscribers on YouTube making a shitload of money on YouTube. It don't, a lot of times, the thing that you want to start, you already got anything you need. We just be overthinking. Oh, I wanna, I wanna shoot a music video. All right, you got a phone. You think you need a cameraman and all this stuff. Oh, I wanna, I wanna start a clothing line. All right, go to the silk screen shop. Start printing your t-shirts out. Like a lot of times we overthink things because we looking at everybody else as highly produced or highly, and it can be intimidating if you don't know. But sometimes you just gotta take a shot. If a person start a business in, in this school right now, how, how, many, how many kids in, this, in the school? 6,000. 6, you know how many people out of that 6,000 could be your customers if you start a clover line? You don't need everybody. But out of that 6,000, I know you get like 300. Just imagine if you're selling, some, you're selling hoodies and stuff, $40. And every time you drop, you can sell like 300 of them. Or not even 300. Say if, you, say if you're bringing it down, you get a manufacturer for about 7 to $8 a pop. You sell them for saying, you know what? People in college, is true. I'm going to sell them for 25. Every time you drop, you can sell a couple hundred hoodies each drop. You're going to do that all winter. You, you, you'll be able to start right here. And guess what? People going to wear your stuff, go back to their cities, and start spreading. What you got on, they're going to tag it. You can start a movement in college. Like movements are starting in college. I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about songs get broke in college, all type of stuff. If you're an artist, you can break a song, and that's 6,000 people that's going to spread it out. But you just got to start, Neff. That's the main thing, just start it. That's pretty hard, you know what I mean? I was a person that I can't lie, I didn't develop uh, self-discipline to a little later in life. I was one of those guys that he was talking about that was caught up in the streets with a street mentality and ooh, I'm a real and all this shit that didn't matter. When real was recognizing everybody ain't loyal, that's what real really mean. So for me, me really like getting myself together was me having kids and understanding that I had a different purpose to live for. You know what I'm saying? For you, it may be something else, but you got to find that, that 
what is it that makes you, you feel what I'm saying? Keep it going and, and utilize that and tap into that energy and utilize that. And, and you gotta understand this, discipline come from, 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 from messing up. Mm -hmm. You, you, go, you gotta go through messing up and not figuring it out. It's not just gonna come overnight. Like I, and like I, I always try to tell the young people, stop focusing on being perfect and focus on being you. And by you being you, you're gonna learn things. And things is gonna come as you being you, but this shit ain't gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be perfect. And everybody gonna try to preach to you. That, how you gonna tell me to live a life that you ain't live yourself? And I know y'all feel that from some of the elders sometimes because everything is based on being perfect out here now. Do this, you shouldn't be doing this. Hold up, I'm living a different life. I got y'all got totally different pressure than we had when we was growing up. So y'all gonna mess up. But you going it's gonna come as you continue to just live life and, and lose, win, lose, lose, win. You gonna you'll figure it out. There's only a couple ways you can learn things. That's from somebody telling you and that's from experience. So some game that you're gonna get from people that's older than you, you take it in and you apply it to your life and then just life is just going life sometimes, and you're going to learn from experience. What was one of y'all struggles y'all had to go through, and how did y'all get through it? You know what was crazy? Like, for us, you know, growing up, it was a little different for us. We grew up in the 80s and 90s. We didn't have the, like, we, me and him is always, always considering the young people and the pressure that y'all got on y'all. We didn't have social media. So if you lived, um, 20 blocks away from us, we didn't see you unless we seen you. We didn't, we couldn't look on social media. We didn't have influences though. You gotta dress like this, you gotta go here, you gotta buy this, you gotta wear it. We didn't have none of that. Your neighborhood did what your neighborhood did. So we didn't, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of pressure that we had outside of just, we grew up at a time where it's though, it was about being a real nigga, being a street. You know what I'm saying? So we was into that type of mindset. Like we in the streets, we out here, we doing that. But now, like a lot of times, I'm always being considerate to the youngins because like y'all got so much pressure on you. Because you on that phone all day and you'll be looking at somebody's life and you'll feel like that you ain't doing enough. Cause somebody might be on their capping and you like, damn, they so far ahead of life and I'm still, we the same age and all they lying, man. A lot of people be on social media lying, they don't really got it like that. And then, and then, and then with the, and then with the young, the young ladies, they on there looking at all these women that's manipulating themselves, uh, their body and all that, and, and doing all this stuff, and you looking and saying, "I'm not enough," or "I'm supposed to have this bag," "I'm supposed to go on this trip," "I'm supposed to have this money." Whole time she capping. So, so it's so much pressure. The, the best thing that you can do right now is be you. And I'm realizing in this time, in this culture, the biggest haters that people got in their life is themselves. Because they'll think of an idea, then they'll think of five reasons why they ain't gonna materialize it or go after it based off of how somebody's gonna look at them. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of y'all, y'all gonna operate through these four years based off of, no, I ain't gonna do this, or I ain't gonna go there, I ain't gonna wear this, I don't wanna. It ain't even because you don't feel it yourself, it's because you worrying about how somebody that you never even had a conversation with is gonna view you. F all that, man. F what they think, man. You better live your life. Because you're young right now, but you, you know, when you look up 20 years later, you're going to be like, damn, when I was supposed to live, I wasn't living. Because I was worrying about somebody else and I was being pimped by people's future perceptions of me. You got to really live your life out here, you're going to be in trouble. And start, don't, don't start when I'm, get out of, start the eighth day, man. You know how you see somebody in, in this school, y'all going to see people in the school, and y'all going to say, oh, they're weird, oh, they, no, 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 you weird. They doing what they want to do, you afraid to do that. No, straight up. They laughing, you, you laughing at them because they different, they laughing at y'all because y'all all the same. Y'all wearing the same shit, listen to the same shit, going to the same, posting the same shit. And then you wonder, you say to yourself, why I ain't getting nowhere? Because you, you're afraid to be you. They being them, that's why they succeed. If you look at society now, and we talk about this, some of y'all might go research. Back in the day, it was this movie called Revenge of the Nerds, right? This was back in the 80s. Right now, the nerds run the world. The smart people run the world. All that cool shit you got going on in your mind, you think you need to be, I'm lit, I'm this, that shit don't mean nothing. The only people that run this world is the thinkers. That phone you got in your pocket, smart people dictate your life. Tesla, whatever you're thinking about, is smart people. It's not the people that's cool. The cool and the real shit 
They don't, they don't, they don't own nothing. They're not creating, they're not manufacturing nothing. So y'all better take this time, educate yourself, and figure out what can I go out to the world and create, create or what team can I be a part of that's leading and creating and designing people's minds? A lot of people is being programmed out of it off of this. Either you're going to be getting programmed or you're going to be programming the, the masses. You got to figure that out. It's all based in adversity in college, right? Out of school. But it's meant to be taking a toll on me. And I want to, you know, give up. What's some um, advice y'all got for me to keep on pushing that for some of Don't look slow now, yes. Listen, Neff, never let go of your dream. You gotta always have that tunnel vision in your path and your direction of where you wanna go in life. It's like a board you see every day in your dorm room, you gotta put that together and figure out who are you, where you wanna go, and how did you get there. And you can't let go of that. Like, you got the promise that you make to yourself or everything you want, I don't know what you want in life. You want the nice car, you want the beautiful home, you want the heavy bank account, you want the beautiful wife or whatever you want. You gotta write that down, write your list down. A lot of us out here operating without no list. You know, before, before I became a millionaire, I wrote it down, this is what I want. Before I got the Lamborghini, I want a Lamborghini, I want the Porsche, I want the Maybach, I, want, I wrote all that stuff down. And it all came, everything came, the house, the bank account, it come, but you gotta write that stuff down and say, this is what I want for me. And you can't let it go now. What's gonna happen is, you're gonna go through the ups and downs in college. You gonna go, the girl gonna break your heart. You know what I mean? You probably think you're a player. You probably think you're smooth, but you're going to find out you ain't. You know what I mean? Young, one of these young ladies is going to show you something different. Um, and, and you're going to have a bunch of couple, couple ups and downs. Don't worry about that. You're going to have a couple ups and downs in life. But what you got to do is you got to promise yourself, this is where I want to be when I get out of college. Either you're going to win or you're going to lose in life. Ain't nobody going to come to save you or babysit you or none of that. It's not happening like that in America. You got winners, you got losers, and you got complainers. So you gotta pick what you want for yourself. And that's for everybody in this room. If you're gonna be dedicated to your education so you can get out here and you get some money. Cause everybody wants some money, right? Oh, everybody wants some money, right? Yes. You, especially you wanna shop, you wanna drive, you wanna live a certain lifestyle. We ain't gonna play no games about that. But in order to do that, you gotta put the work in now. Knock these years off of school, but while you in school, build that network. Don't be in here standoffish. I don't mess with them, I don't mess with them. Nah, that's not how college go. College is about building a network and connecting with different cultures, different, different locations, and just connecting with different people. So when you walk out of here, you got a roller deck of people that's in different fields from different locations that you can get on that phone and connect with. That's what it's about. That's what they do with these other colleges. These, these, these uh, PWI, that's what they do. And once y'all get older, y'all gonna connect y'all kids with the resources that y'all established here. That's what the game is about. Some of y'all up against, y y as black people in America, y'all kids gotta understand that y'all up against some serious, y'all up against kids that's gonna come out of college and they going in the same, same workforce as y'all work field that y'all going in, but the only thing different, they dad gonna make that call. They dad gonna make that call so they could be one of the head managers in Wells Fargo. Y'all dads can't do that. So y'all gotta start establishing that now so later on in life, y'all can make that call for y'all kids. But don't play, yeah, don't play no games in here though. I know you're going to party, you're going to have fun, you're going to go up and, but, but stay on top of your education and what's the main, the, the end game of this whole thing when you get out of here. That's what this is really about. Don't play no games, if you play games, you're going to be somewhere crying. Working at Target after you got your, you, you didn't for, paying, paying all, this, all these funds back, working at Target, mad at the world. On Instagram, hating under somebody's page. I'm just being real, man. But everything possible, Neff, you got to stay down. Keep the promise to yourself. Next question. Where your clothes, Neff? Where your clothes at? I be making clothes, but like, I just came up here because of um, my housing stuff, so I ain't got no clothes. So like, I be designing clothes and stuff like that, and then I be putting it on, and I be posting some of it, but I don't really, like, I don't know how to get it out there for you know? Like, how to stand. You gotta have it on you. You gotta have it on you, Neff. Because you never know who you're going to run into. In your car or whatever, you got to have it on you. You, you. I understand you be making it for yourself, but if you want other people to have it, you got to have that in your car, in your trunk. You got to pull up and pass it off. Sometimes you're going to pass it off. Some people, like me, we don't take nothing for free from nobody. We buy these stuff. And then we wear it. We wear it on our show, whatever. We, you know, I give it to other artists, whatever. But you got to have it, Neff. Like right now, I'd have paid you for it and wore it on the show. 
Like you slipping, you know what I mean? You can't, you, like this game ain't, this ain't no magical game. If you gonna be about something out here, don't talk about it, live that shit. Cause when you live it, that's when the blessings gonna come. You see what I'm saying? You can't say, oh man, I, got, I sell food. Why you ain't never got no food with you, man? You know what I mean? You gotta be on your game, Neff. Next time I see you, be on your game. You know, Philly is rough. You know, where we come from, it's, it's a little wicked down there. Honestly, he helped me get through it. Uh, my wife, and uh, you know, I had a lot of friends, a lot of support people that reached out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's still an everyday struggle. You know what I mean? Losing a child, somebody that they supposed to bury you, you're not supposed to bury them. So, you know, it's always a struggle. But I also understand that uh, something that's done, I can't change that and I gotta live for his son. You know what I'm saying? Because he had a son, so I got a different purpose now that I gotta live for his son and be there for his son. So that's what keep me going. What made y'all like, like, how did y'all build a person to take the first steps in building your business, like starting correct? Like our business was basically off of, uh, you know, communication. Like we was in, we was doing podcast, we was on social media. It was all, we were just us. We didn't have to do that. Some people got it and some people don't. Uh, that's why it's very important that you know your strengths and you align with your weaknesses, you know? And uh, me and him got different strengths, but one thing we do, we had personality, we had character, we knew, we, we, and we didn't fear nothing, and we believed in ourselves. You know what I mean? Number, the number one thing in life, you gotta look in that mirror and believe in the person you see in that mirror. If you don't believe in that person, no, ain't nobody else gonna believe in you. You know how you might see somebody, they tell me, yeah, I'm a rapper. All right, well, they rap, they looking down, they don't believe. But then you see somebody, they popping it, they got you all tapped in. They look at you in your eyes, they looking in the crowd. They, it's a difference. Um, and I just think you, you gotta know who you are, first and foremost. And you gotta have a real conversation with yourself, Neff, and that's for everybody. Like, who am I and where I wanna go at in life? And am I that person that I'm hyping myself up to say I am? Because social media be having everybody thinking that they they person because they want to live that lifestyle of that person that they watching. And then sometimes don't be them. And they'd be afraid to have a conversation to be like, yo, I might not got what it take to be a rapper. I might not got what it take to be a clothing designer because I might not be willing to put that work in. See, the, the key to all this is putting the work in. That's the key to all this, you know? I got, I got doctor and lawyer friends, they riding around in the same Lamborghini, but they put that work in, they went to school and put that work in to get to that level. And right now, society is teaching all the young people on social media that it's right now. Right now is the biggest pimp out here than ever. Right now is destroying people. Nobody can think about that. what I'm gonna be at seven years from now. I can have this, I can have that. Everybody thinking about right now, so you gotta have that what tomorrow's gonna look like for me if I put the work in right now. That's what it's about now. When you a makeup artist, it's all about getting better, learning, trying stuff, doing stuff, and putting videos out. Putting videos out where people can see you, you actually doing the, the makeup, it's sped up, but it's showing how you break the makeup down. Then next thing you know, you could do a class where you could charge people to come through, you break it down, you show them how they supposed to do their makeup, the right blends, the right tones. The, so there's so many things you can do, but initially you have to put the work in. You feel what I'm saying? Find somebody around here who makeup you could do, beat their face, show the whole video you beating their face, and that gotta be an ongoing thing where you just do it, you just do it, you just do it, because this is what I love to do. I love to make people look beautiful. I also love to make this content, and to me making this content, it also brings me money in because now people see what I can do, and when it's events, I'm the person that they calling on. Is the makeup expensive? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. so, so how much you be paying for it like this? How much you gotta pay for it? A foundation could go for $50, $60. Oh, like what you mean? That's a, that's, that's just a, that's just one bottle. Oh, 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 oh. All right, but well, come, come right here real quick. Let me help you out real quick, come here. Oh, oh. Come here. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that beautiful smile. Now, you took a regular one with 90. What is a full beat? Oh, she don't wear a bunch of makeup. What's a full beat? It could be, um, if it's like rhinestone. Thank you so 
you get your thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. Did you make up? 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 today and if your faith and your relationship with God has any uh, way that it makes you show up in reality in how you do business and how you just live your lives. I mean honestly I always had a relationship with God. It was just my energy changed. I used, you know even when I was a thundercat running around in the streets wild and crazy I had a relationship with God but I had bad energy on me. So when I decided to let that energy go, it just seemed like positive things just start happening for me. So for me, it, it's just all about positive energy now. Because when I, my, the part of my life when I had that negative energy around me, I wasn't glowing, I wasn't growing. But when I learned to let it go, you know what I mean? My growth just skyrocketed. So for me, I always had a relationship with God, but it's more about keeping positive energy around me. Let me just say this, right? When you come from these inner cities, a lot of times we focus on the wrong stuff. We focus on being too tough, too thorough, too fly, too this, too that. And a lot of times it's gonna keep you too broke. So just be you and do you and understand who you are as an individual. And I understand that some of y'all 18, 19, you're still trying to find out who you are. But on your journey, be you. Don't, don't be influenced by nobody else. Don't get caught up by what nobody else is trying to do. Just be you, man. And be the best you that you could possibly be. And I promise you, go shine. Don't be on nobody else's time clock. Don't be worrying about how somebody, what they're going to say about you, what they think about you, because wherever you win or lose, they're going to talk about you. Now, you know, you just got to stay focused on you and go out there and live the best life you can live possible because you ain't going to get these years back. Enjoy these years. Have fun, meet new people, party, do, live your life. You're going to mess up. Ain't nobody going to, listen, no matter how perfect you think you is, it's not going to stop you from messing up in life. Go out there and live and win big. So listen, I run into this sister today, right? Tell me what's your name. My name is Cam. Her name is Cam. She got a makeup page called Kill My Cam, yeah. where she'll kill your face and make sure you look beautiful tonight. But yes. listen, we, we came down to the university. Everybody, tell them where we at. Yes, yeah. 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 Listen, so tell them, tell them where to follow you at. Make some more noise, y'all. Yeah. Be a Jew! Yeah.